Greetings, I'm Rick Graber, president of the Bradley Foundation. Thanks so much for joining us for what should be a very fun episode of We the People. For many, when we talk about history, too often the words dull or old or irrelevant often come next. And young people especially, being so immersed in tech and innovation, uh, it's just hard to get them engaged in the past, uh, perhaps harder than in previous generations. But what if they had the opportunity to imagine life as a beer baron in Milwaukee in the 1800s, or to literally view or envision their city's past from a kayak. Our guest today is offering just that, and in doing so, inspiring a new generation to appreciate the heritage and history of their hometown. May McCauley serves as the executive director and president of the Milwaukee County Historical Society. She's also an adjunct professor of communications at Marquette University, and American University. Previously, Maim worked for the National Trust for Historic Preservation and the White House Historical Association. Maim, welcome. It's great to have you. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. Absolutely. Uh, let's start with a, a big picture question. Uh, there's been a, a very contentious national debate about how to teach history to kids. As the head of a historical society, What's the best way to educate children about their country's past? You know, our, our approach has really been that we need to get them excited about it. And the way we have found that um, we can best work with them is through hands-on, our hands-on history program, so they can see and touch and feel and make that, you know, relation, but also to connect it to what they know today. So you're a seven-year-old and you're holding a Cream City brick and you're learning about that history, let's say, and you can relate it to, oh, my school is made of Cream City Brick. And so we've really gone to uh, teaching history and local history um, through making connections for students based on what they know today and what matters in their lives. Uh, well, I mean, let's stay on this topic a little bit. Sadly, many kids just seem to find history a little bit boring, but, but you've been determined to bring history to life, to make it interesting, to make it relevant. Tell us some of the ways that you've done that, very creative ways. And uh, you know, how do you come up with these ideas? <laughs> well, I, I think it's it's looking at who um, we want to reach and finding out what they want to know and what they want to do and what matters to them and serving them in that way. Uh, so we had the Pilot Beer Museum, which was fun. But what we saw is people liked beer. They do like beer. They like to know more about it. And so we said, well, why not learn about Milwaukee's beer history? Uh, we've got the kayak, which is a great uh collaboration with Milwaukee Kayak Company, and they uh, give us the ability to be on the river and we tell the history and we use photos from our collections to, uh, again, make that connection of today and the past. So they're seeing a building and we say, well, this is what it used to look like, or you're going by Gertie's, uh, where Gertie's nest would have been, and here's what that used to look like. So uh, those are just a few examples of how we can bring it into everyday experiences in life, our bike tours as well, and and in our exhibits, uh, making sure they're interactive and you can uh, leave with not just learning something and reading something, but doing something. The view of the city from the water is just so different. It, I mean, it's terrific. It's stunning. Uh, I mean, you've had, you have an interesting past. What, what did you learn from your roles at the White House Historical Association and the National Trust uh, that, that civic leaders here in Milwaukee and certainly from all over the country, our audiences all over the country, what can they learn from those experiences about cultivating a community that, that truly does care about its past? So I, you know, I, I wasn't a, a his, history major in school, and this wasn't something I pursued from a history standpoint. And really, I think it's all about stories. And I think from a, a small beings, we're all told stories. And, uh, oh, did you know mommy and daddy got married there? And ours was the Mark Plaza for my parents and um, now the Hilton. And, oh, did you know this or that? And, and we learn through stories. And so I don't look at history so much as learning about certain facts of the past. I look at it as exploring stories, relating them to your life and, and, and sharing them in a way that makes it important to others. Uh, and so I think what I've learned through all these roles is that when you share stories, history, um, that's what gets passed down. So it's very rare, Rick, that you say to someone, oh, did you know in 1901 this happened, da-da-da-da-da. Instead, they'll tell you a really good story, like, hey, 
I met this woman and she was telling me a story that in 1901, this happened. And, and when it's in story form, I think that's what we pass down and we learn from. So I find that when we share those stories and we ignite that interest in people, that's when history is best shared and preserved. And so that's what I've learned in all these uh, positions. And I think it's what made me so excited about uh, coming here to work at the Historical Society in Milwaukee County is I love Milwaukee. I have a deep history here. And therefore, I love sharing those stories and passing those on to my children as well. Terrific. Well, let's have a little fun. Every city has its quirks, and uh, we're certainly no exception here in Milwaukee. It's our love of fish fries, of beer, cheese, festivals, strange words like bubbler. Uh, (laughs) How do you highlight some of those things in a fun way for your visitors? So our archivist, Steve Schaffer, really uh, took to Facebook, uh, which sounds odd um, by, uh, for uh, archives, but uh, he did. And he started sharing those photos and um, pasts and finding this international community of people with connections to Milwaukee that wanted to celebrate that. And so I think that's one of the coolest ways we've done it. Um, I, I don't know if you've been inside the society uh, in the past few years, but there was originally uh, letters on City Hall that spelled out different messages to Milwaukeeans. It was on the South Side for about 80 years. And uh, they're ma- made most famous by Laverne and Shirley uh, when it said, welcome to Milwaukee. And so what uh, Steve also did is uh, he rewired those letters. And now we spell out messages uh, at, in, in and outside the society with the original uh, letters. And so I think that's a really cool tradition. Oh, is neat. We had that Laverne and Shirley. And um, when Penny died, uh, was in Laverne and Shirley, Penny Marshall, we, uh, that day, Steve got to it and put in the windows looking out at the river, Penny. And we were actually on NBC Nightly News that night for doing that. And so I think that's been some fun ways that we've highlighted the history. Uh, and of course, what does everyone like? Beer, cheese, polka. Our polka night was so much fun. Uh, so I don't think it's just telling people about it. It's doing it. For our national audience, you better tell everyone what a bubbler is. A bubbler, a bubbler is a drinking fountain. Don't say a water <laughs> fountain. Or they'll send you around the corner of the water fountain. It's a drinking fountain. Where's the bubbler, right? <laughs> exactly. Uh, Mame, there's a tremendous interest in genealogy due to websites like Ancestry.com and others. What resources does the society provide for people with Milwaukee ties who want to learn more about their heritage? Well, we have more than 75,000 artifacts, which are three-dimensional. And then as far as our uh, papers, it's uh, more than 1 million documents, 1 million photos. And uh, I'd say one of the most important parts uh, for a genealogist is the naturalization documents, um, the civil court records. Uh, The images can be so important Uh, if you want you come in and Grandpa Bob used to have a butcher on National Avenue. And can I find anything about that? Uh, and then our city directories would be another way. I think one of the most important things we have is uh, um, people that help you find what you're looking for. And so we have uh, two full-time archivists and their job is really to not only care and preserve for these documents, but help you to find them. And so that's really maybe the best Uh, resource we have is people who care about this past, preserving it and helping individuals as they come in, more than 5,000 a year, find exactly what they're looking for. Uh, You must find that people bring some very unusual items to the historical society. And with people at home (laughs) so much during the pandemic, I wonder if uh, you got an even greater surge of items as people were cleaning out their basements and attics. Uh, Is that what you found? Yes, I think that's what people did. You're stuck at home and you think, well, it's time to start cleaning. (laughs) Uh, So we did. And uh, we um, find family heirlooms that people bring in, a lot of photos, which are always helpful. Um, Family documents, um, you know, people who had former positions here at major companies that have things relative to that, which is nice. Uh, So that's nice. But yeah, we've been uh, offered a full crane, um, (laughs) like an actual (laughs) industrial crane. Uh, we were offered a uh, really a booby trap. And when we under, understood from the phone call that it actually wasn't unarmed, we said, no, 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 no. You're going to call the hazmat team to unarm it. And then we'll talk to you about it. <laughs> uh, so that's that was a special one. And if we had uh, even $1 for every piano and wedding dress we were offered, we'd be fine financially. <laughs> um, and what we find with the wedding dresses is that's something people don't like to just get rid of. Um, And when they find that they don't have someone in secession, they're like, what am I going to do with it? 
So that's very common. But yeah, uh, we one of our mottos is you can't make this stuff up. And if you saw some of the stuff that comes in, um, <laughs> uh, but then you get the very cool things, uh, you know, um, a key to the city, Schlitz key to the city that was given to the mayor. Um, we have every key for uh, the Sch- former Schlitz brewery, for example, in that collection. So um, a, a lot of PAPS history. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, you're also the interim director of the Paps Mansion, Frederick Paps Old Home, and you found ways to make an interesting but still very traditional historic house a real destination. Talk about that a little bit. It's been so much fun. So we reopened in April, and they went from having one tour to now eight different tours. Uh, one, for example, is the happy hour tour. And it, you start with a beer. Imagine that, a Paps Blue Ribbon. And instead of learning more about the decor of the house and the, the family um, in, in the aspect of just who they were, we learn about what it would have been like to be entertained by the Paps because the Paps family loved to entertain uh, Captain and Mrs. And so they're invited into the front door on this tour and learn what it would have been like when they were welcomed in and then served um, throughout the evening. And uh, halfway through the tour, you actually get to go to the, you know, what their refrigeration was at the time and get a second beer out of it um, for <laughs> yourself. So it's, it's just finding out what others are looking for in their experience and giving them that. Instead of saying, here's the experience we want to give, we say, here's what people are looking for. And we find a way to give them that. And it's been a somewhat neglected part of the sort of the outskirts of downtown in Milwaukee. I assume that it, the, the the reopening of the mansion has helped the community, the neighborhood there a lot. So, yeah, it was it was closed for 13 months and um, it, it was too bad. They took advantage of it and rewired the entire house, which is very important. But it is it's on the Marquette campus. We've uh, really we have a new relationship with the history department where students are coming over and doing their um, internships with us in more meaningful ways. So, yeah, it's it is great for that area of town from Milwaukee and You know, when we just look at historic houses in general, they're not doing that well um, nationally. And uh, we're determined to make that the PAPS not part of that trend. And I think we're on our way to that. It's a um, a relevant history, important. And the PAPS family is a big part of that story, but just the story of Grand Avenue at the now Wisconsin Avenue. So we can't, you know, put it in a box and say it's the PAPS family history. It's so much more than that. It's a way of life, industry, uh, um, a part of an era so I think we're, we're opening up that, that wider net of, of story. I agree. Last question, Mame. With the holidays upon us, what are some uniquely Milwaukee Christmas traditions or stories uh, that you've come across since you've been at the Historical Society? Well, you know, not since Historical Society, but growing up, my grandparents were good friends, if you will, of Billy the Brownie. And so Billy the Brownie has always been uh, important to me and to Milwaukee. And he's on display right now uh, for the holiday season. And we bring him out every year. People come to see him. But I think Billy the Brownie is a very special part of Milwaukee's history. Uh, And he really lives on today, which is so neat. Um, And I know, you know, my kids know who he is now. So again, it's about passing those stories down, right? Right. And uh, just recently, uh, St. Nick's Day, I was living in D.C., as you know, working at the National Trust and Wisconsin, White House Historical Association. And I didn't realize that nobody there did St. Nick. Uh, <laughs> that's really, you know, a German thing in a, um, yes. here in Milwaukee, highly celebrated. So I think that's a wonderful tradition. And being a very Irish gal, uh, we didn't do the pickle on the tree. And now since being at the Paps so much, uh, my children for St. Nick's actually got their first pickle ornament. <laughs> So that'll be on the tree this year. And I think it's so much fun to hear people really talk about how that's become such a part of their Christmas morning among siblings to race down there and find the pickle on the tree, which is the tradition. Uh, and they get a little gift for finding it. So I think those are three of my favorite when it comes to uh, holidays here. Um, and, you know, maybe someday we can get that holiday parade back, which is really a special part right. of Milwaukee's holiday traditions too. Absolutely. Great traditions. May Macaulay. Thanks so much for your time today. Thanks so much for the great work that you and your organization are doing in our community. And of course, thanks to all of you for joining us on this episode of We the People. 